Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today we're going to cover repairing your cabinet doors or if your cabinets have cracks in them anywhere. Now, um, I had a cabinet business for a number of years and I would have customers calling me and they had old cabinets a lot of times and you got stress cracks in them on the hinge side. Sometimes it's on the other side. Sometimes people just broke them and they didn't know what to do with it. I'm going to show you some easy ways to fix it yourself and uh, if it's really bad you would have to refinish the cabinet or the door and I'm going to show you how to repair it so you can refinish it and maybe go back over and paint it or stain it a different color. One of the conventional ways is using a good wood glue. This is an interior exterior wood glue. It's tight bond too. I really like this glue but um, it's going to take longer to set. Here's another option. You can use a two-part glue. This is an instant glue that has an activator and uh, your glue. And what you do is you put the activator on one side and you put your glue on the other. When you bond it, it really bonds fast and it's super strong. Now, I've always used Mohawk because Mohawk makes some great products. I use a lot of theirs and uh, that's the only thing I've been using over the years. Well, I've had a number of subscribers of mine that are, that are experienced woodworkers that use this product. It's called 2P10 and it's made by FastCap. I was real impressed with it because the price is much lower than my Mohawk and it's just as good. I can't say it's better, I can't say it's worse because it bonded exactly like I wanted it to and it worked real well. So, I will tell you this, I will be buying that in the future. Now, what I did was I got a whole kit here for $30 and I have a number of different thicknesses on glue. Now you can buy the Mohawk in all types of thicknesses and I always use my heavy. Here you can get thin, you get gel to heavy to medium and then thin. So it's a great little deal and uh, like I said this only cost me $30. I'm going to take this and we're going to use this with these little applicators. That's another thing that I really like is you have these tiny little applicators where I can squeeze into some tight spots and these are throwaway. So Let's go ahead and open this up and glue it and see what happens. Now I want to show you what I get from people all the time. I messed this up on purpose to really give you an idea of what you could be looking at. Um, I'll have customers that have come to me with their doors and they tried to fix it. They didn't get the glue all the way down in there throughout the whole thing. You see this door is split all the way. So what you want to do is you're going to lightly sand this outside area, clean up any glue that's in there. I'll take my razor blade and just kind of scratch everything out that I can. If it doesn't touch everywhere, don't worry. You get a, a good bond if you can get enough of it to, to grab on there and we can fill this and I'll show you how to do that. When it comes to painting cabinets, it's a lot easier to repair because you can repair this, sand it, and a lot of times I get touch up lacquer and I'll spray it. But if you're going to change it, just say, for instance, you use an oil base or latex paint in your house to paint your cabinets. Well, then it's easy to fix. All you have to do is get this thing repaired, and you can sand it down and paint it and match what you have or go with a, a whole new color. That's going to close up pretty good. I see, I see what's holding it right here. There's a nail that was used to tack this back and that's holding it out some. So I'm going to have to get that out. I've got to get those two little staples out in order for that to close properly. So I'm going to use my go-to screwdriver with an awl on it. Now if you have a hand awl, that's perfect. A, a point, something that has a good point in it, this will be able to get in there, I hope, and pry that out. Get my hammer. That's some really hard wood. Oak. Get that in to come out and I can get some pliers on it. See those little staples? We need to get all of this stuff clean right here, so I'll take a, my razor knife, open it up, and make sure that I get all this glue out of here. Now, it's a lot easier if, if no one tried to repair it prior to this, but I just wanted you to see what happens if 
if someone tried to repair it or if you tried to repair it and made a mistake and you have to go back over it, you can fix it. Just clean all that stuff out of there. Right here, this is your panel and this is supposed to be able to slide back and forth in there, so do not glue this. Just glue this part right here. So we'll take this tape. up under there. Now I'm going to widen it out, push it down, and the tape kind of holds it open. So I'm going to take my activator right here, and you have a, it comes with caps, but it also comes with a little brush in here, so you can take this and brush it on real well where I need it. That's one thing I really love about this little kit, man, this is cool put my little applicator on top. I'm just going to squeeze it right in here. And I'm using the medium for this because I want it to run down a little bit. I don't want it to be like a gel. I want it to cover real well. You don't have much time at all once you start this. Now, what we're going to have to do is get a little Bondo in there to strengthen that and to close that gap. First, I'm going to take and glue this other end over here. Take it, flip it around. I didn't glue the back side yet, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up everywhere where it didn't touch. And I'm not going to need my activator with this. I'm just going to glue, put my glue in here. Just a little piece of trim is what it is set it down on there. Make sure your fingers aren't stuck to it because it will, it will bite you. All right, that's done there for now. We're going to go over here and we have this spot here that needs to open up and get some glue in there. We'll take this, put it on there and open up this end. Open it up, get that glue to go down in there, okay. You want to make sure that it, it's not kicked out and uh, the way to do that is take it upside down where it's flat and get your measurement, 17 and 5 eighths, 17 and 5 eighths and 17 and 5 eighths. It's still square, so we're great. Now we'll take and sand this down and get it ready. So I'm going to use 80 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander. When sanding this, be very careful not to go too deep and mess up any of these, uh, the detail here. So I just knock this off and I'll just take my little hand sander and clean this up. You just want to scuff it up good to where you can fill all these cracks and not have anything sticking to it, but you don't want to mess up that profile. If I have really large holes to fill, I'll use this Bondo hair. This is some great stuff. It's fiberglass mixed with Bondo, so it's more consistent. So if you have to fill a hole that's, that um, is hard to fill because the Bondo wants to ooze out, this will stay in the hole a lot better. When it comes to little things like this, I want it to ooze down, so Bondo is the key. I use automotive gloves. Um, any, any type of automotive glove, I really like these because they're thick. I can reuse them over and over, and I don't have to worry about them falling apart on me. Take a little tape, put it on the bottom side of this. I'm going to try to get it to ooze down as much as I can in there. Wipe it down real good. You want this to be really clean. 
mix up my cream. You want to make sure you mix this up well before you put it in there. And I'll make it, it's summertime, so things will dry real fast. Well, it's not summer, but it's pretty hot over here. So uh, you don't have to use a whole lot of cream a hardener, but you want it to be at least pink like this. You don't want to wait all day for it to dry, and you want it to dry well. So you're looking for that pink color, and that's what I have here. This is going to dry pretty fast. Try to fill it in there as much as you can in that crack. Try to get it off that detail around there because you don't want to have to try to sand that off. It's kind of hard to get off of there after it's in. And you don't want to lose that detail. So, don't leave any in there. You can put it on to where it sits over the top of it. We'll sand it down. That way you know you don't have any grooves. But right here you just want to be careful. You can always put a little spot putty on this corner on the detail part. All right. Go ahead and see what we have over here. I don't want this to touch, so I'm going to go ahead and put it up. Fill the back side. Get it in there as much as you can and then mound it over the top. So you can sand it down to that point. I'll let it sit for about 20 minutes and uh, now it's ready to sand. If you look at the front side, I did this side first, okay? And I made sure I pushed it down. Well, you see how it's sticking up right here, right where the crack is? When I did the back side and I forced it in, it pushed some out there, which is good. That means I filled the whole void up. So we'll go ahead and sand it down real quick and see what we got. I love this orbital sand sander. This is an orbital polisher, so it, it moves in all directions. Basically, it's an electric DA sander made by Porter Cable. I'll have the link in the description box for it. I don't deal with Porter Cable, but I will tell you, that is my favorite sander. There you go, that's going to be plenty strong. Once we paint this, you'll never know it was there. This video wouldn't be any good if I didn't show you exactly how I fix everything on it. Right here is where it splintered out. And a tiny bit was sticking out right here. So what I did was I put a little bit of this uh, thin glue on it, the 2P10, right down in there. And then I just held it in place and I shot it with a couple of squirts of the activator. And then once I pulled my knife off, it was nice and tight. Because what happened was I was sanding, and you see, it was catching the edge of my, uh, my sponge and tearing it. And that's, that's how I knew I had a little splinter there, because my eyes aren't that great, and I didn't see it at first. OK, so we clean this up with the sponge. And I can see a little crack right here. Now, it's, it's glued tight, but it's just a chip out of there. And when you have something small like that, I use Bondo filler. This is a, a spot putty. Unfortunately, I went down to the auto supply and picked this one up, and it's one that you have to use the hardener with. I like my spot putty where I can just put it on my finger and rub in here, and it dries. And uh, they do have it. It looks just like this, except it doesn't have the creamer with the uh, uh, the hardener with it. So I went there because this one was pretty much gone, but I got enough to where I can get this out and work with it. So I'll fill this little area, and I can come back over this in a couple minutes and sand it. That's the great, the beauty of, of uh, using spot putty. When this is not dark anymore and it starts to look light, it's fine. Now I can come back and sand it. So I'll just hit this right here and stay right in those grooves and clean up the rest. We'll take some denatured alcohol, rub on there, make sure it's clean, and I'm going to go ahead and put some primer in the spots and let you see how, how well we hid this. 
I'm using Rust-Oleum Automotive Primer for this. It's a great primer. Well, I let this dry and uh, cut my grass, got a few things done and got cleaned up. But I want to show you this. Check it out. This is the back. And you see where it was split on the hinge side? Remember this? It was really bad. Now look at the front side. Once it's all painted and finished, you'll never be able to tell if this was ever split in the first place. I finished the door, and all I have to do is put my clear coat on here. I'm going to show you how I got that stained look. Make sure you check out the description box, and at the very end of this video, as soon as I have that one up, it will be posted in those two places. This 2P10 is some awesome stuff. It really did a great job of bonding it together, and uh, like I said, I also like Bondo. Bondo is a great wood filler, a great wood fixer. So, together these two products work fantastic. I'm going to be giving two of these kits away to the first 175 comments I get. So I'm going to randomly choose two of them out of the first 175 comments, and I'll mail you this. So, um, make sure to drop a comment on me, and if if you're after the 175, don't worry. Just go ahead and put comments in because sometimes I go back if I get extra, extra products from places and I'll choose somebody from the latter part. So if you found this useful, hit like for me. Check out paulstoolbox.com for all my archived videos. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project.